Well, hello and welcome to this exercise on uh, transformation by stretch and shear. It is uh, an IGCSE exam question, and that this seems to be very a very popular uh, topic for um, IGC, IGCSE. So, <laughs> um, I've done some videos on transformation by stretch and shear. In fact, I've done about six videos on this already. Uh, this is another one. Now, for this one. I'm going to go beyond what's asked in the question itself. So you need to be patient to get to the end of this uh, transmission. Right. Now, the there are two parts to this question. Uh, section A, part one says, draw the image of shape A after a stretch factor, after a stretch factor three, x-axis invariant. Now, as we know, from other videos, the new if x is invariant line, the new uh, y coordinate of any given point is three times the old y coordinate because the uh, stretch factor is three, so y prime is equal to three y. Now that being the case, the this c there, the point c would then be. 3 times 3 because that's the y value is 3 here. So 3 times 3 is the point C is going to be uh, there, which will be 9. And the point E, which is there, the y coordinate is 1. So the new coordinate for E will be 3 times 1 will be 3. And that's what you got here. So you got C prime and E prime. So E prime and C do coincide. Similarly, for D, the y coordinate for d is 1, so the new y coordinate for d, bearing in mind that the stretch factor is 3, so the new y coordinate for d is going to be there at d prime. So now our object A now becomes the triangles uh, C prime, D prime, and E prime. Now to check, the area of this triangle is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and, the, and 1, 2. So 6 times 2 is 12. Divide 12 by 2, you got 6. And the area of the object A is 2. So if you divide 6 by 2, you get 3. So we're right. OK? Now, be careful. The object A is not similar to the the new image C prime, D prime, E prime that we've created, they are not similar in it at all. Okay, now because the stretch factor is three, the um, transformation matrix for stretch in this case is going to be one, zero, zero, three. Now to check, if we then multiply the transformation matrix by the various um, coordinates of C, D, and E, which you got there. Okay, now, the X values will stay the same, so you got one, three, one, so in effect, if you multiply, you should get something like this now. You should get your one, three becomes one, nine, and then your three, one becomes three, three, and your one, one becomes one, three. So the X, so the Y values, are increased by a factor of three there. Now let's check. Uh, one times one is one. Zero times three is zero. So zero plus one will give you one. So that's one there. Now for the y, zero times one is zero. Three times three is nine. Nine plus zero will give me nine, and so on. So that's what you got there. So these are the uh, the new coordinates for the triangle C prime, D prime, E prime. And I hope that makes sense. Now for the next slide. Okay, now for this slide, at the end of this slide, hopefully, like I said hopefully, I shall try and show you how to find an invariant line. Okay, if you have um, a case where you're giving uh, a shear and you're not sure what the invariant line is, I'm going to show you how to find the invariant line. So hopefully you watch to the end, please. All right, okay, here we go. Uh, now, this is what we got. And it says, uh, describe fully the single transformation which maps shape of shape A into shape B. 
uh, for shape A, which is a triangle, are uh, given the values uh, C, D, C, D, E there, as you can see there. And they say, write down the matrix represents the transformation which maps shape A onto shape B. Right. Now, looking at this now, uh, purely by common sense, uh, this cannot be stretched because the areas are the same. If we check, 2 times 2 is 4, divide 4 by 2, you get 2. Now, in this case, the height is 2 and the width is also 2 there. So 2 times 2 is 4, divide 4 by 2, you get 2. So the areas are the same. So this suggests to us that this is transformation by shear. Okay, now continuing just to prove that um, from C to C prime, which is the new value, of the new position for C, we have uh, this. Oh, right. <laughs> this is my displacement from C to C prime. Now, it's displacement in the sense that it's got a direction and it, it has also got magnitude. So, in fact, it's a, it's a vector. Okay. So, the displacement from C to C prime going from left to right is 6. Uh, because we count as 1, 2, 3, 4, that should be 5, 6 there. Okay. Now, the, and that's a C prime, D prime, and C prime, and E prime. Now, the, the C coordinate, sorry, the Y coordinate of C, in other words, the perpendicular distance from the from the x axis to c is 3 and therefore the shear factor is 6 divided by 3 and the answer is 2 okay now let's check now if let's check for d now the displacement from d to d prime is 2 the distance from the x axis to position D is 1. So if you divide displacement by this distance there, so 2 divided by 1 is 2. So which again confirms that the shear factor is also 2. Now let's check for E. Now from E to D, we've got two units there. And the distance from the invariant line to E, that was the, the, the Y coordinate of E is 1. If you divide 2 by 1, you get 2. So in effect, the transformation from A, object A to image B is by shear and with a shear factor of 2, with the x axis being the invariant line. And the transformation matrix will look something like this one here. And just to confirm that, let's have a look. Um, and that would be a C, D, and E. Okay. Now the Y values will be the same after transformation, uh, but the X values will change. So now we've got something like this. So we've got uh, C prime, D prime, and E prime. Now let's check. Uh, 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. You've got 7 there. 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 3 gives us 5. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 gives us 3. So we're right there. So this says uh, the object A has been transformed by shear with, with stretch factor of 2 uh, with the y-axis being invariant. Now. For the next video, uh, next slide, oh, I can't do the next slide. Now, can you please, please subscribe and I can tell you when I've done the next video that shows you how to find the invariant line. Now, I hope all that makes some sense and please, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you again sometime. Bye-bye.